Welcome back. This week we're going to be taking a look at the Chapter 11, Exercise 1 from Murox PHP and MySQL. This week we're working with arrays and modifying arrays with different functions. So we've got this task list manager with a list of tasks. It's actually an array of tasks and we're going to be performing different functions on it as we go through the exercise. So let's jump right into it. Starting with step one, we run the application from the EX Starts Chapter 11 Exercise 1 folder. And this is a modified version of the Task List Manager. It has a Modify button, a Promote Task button, and a Sort Tasks button. Okay, test this application, step two, by using the Add Task button to enter three tasks and the Delete Task button to delete one of the tasks. All right, so I'm going to add some tasks in here with the generic names of task 1, 2, and 3. Task 1, task 2, and task 3. All right, and then I'm going to delete one of these tasks and test out the, the delete button. I'm going to pick task 2 just from the middle of the ones we just added. Go ahead and delete that task, and now we just have task 1 and task 3. So that's great for step 2. Moving on to step three, open the index.php and tasklist.php for this application. And note that these files use the name and value attributes of the submit buttons to get the action to be performed. So in previous exercises in our forms, we've included hidden inputs that uh, indicated the action to be performed. This, this, uh, in this exercise, they have the input type equals submit, the name equals action, and the value is the value of the button. So they're actually using the button itself to indicate which action to be performed. They're no longer using the hidden input as the action to send to the controller. And if we take a look at the controller, the code for that is still the same. We get the action off of the post, so it's the action uh, parameter in the post, and we just use it just like we always have been. But again, it's because we've named our, our submit button, the name here is action. So this is the action that's getting submitted. When we go into the index, we've got a switch on the action variable, and the cases, the various cases that you see in the code are the the, the values that show up on the buttons. Okay. So that's good for step three. Let's move on to step four, which is to use the printr function that we've you're been using. Hopefully you're familiar with by now. But it says go back to the task list.php and insert the a printr just inside the main tag. So we'll go ahead and do that. PHP print r on the task list and close that out. When we save that, when we resubmit our form, like it says on step five, save your changes, run the application, you should see the indexes and values for the task list array in the browser. So here's our task list array being printed out inside the browser. We've got the index of zero for the first item, index of one for the second item, and so on. I notice that the arrays are zero indexed, which is why we get the index of zero is right chapter, but down later when we print it out, we have to uh, increment that add one to it when we print out the first item is right chapter. Okay, moving on to step six. We are going to modify the code for adding a task so it uses the array push function to add a new task to the end of the array. So if we take a look at the add task function right now, or add task action, it uses the shorthand for appending an item onto the end of the array. So it's got this empty square brackets. And that adds a new item onto the end of the array. The task for this step is to change this to use the array push function. Array push. And the array push takes the array that you're going to add to, and it also takes a, a variable that you're going to add to that array. So our array is going to be task list, and the new value is our new task. comment out the old version. When we save this, okay, 
hit save to should add a new task on here. I'm going to add task 2 back. And it should work, well, just like it was before, we're just using a different function to add that item. So when I click add task, yes, I've got task 2 as the last item in my array. Great, so that's good for st step 6. Let's take a look at step 7. Now this is a little interesting because it's the, the modify task button. And they're telling us we should, uh, if they click modify task, we should hide this form and show another form that has the save and cancel buttons on it, which is actually already existent inside of our task list.php. So down at the bottom we have two forms. The first form is the modify promote delete form, basically the one that we see right here. And the other form, which is hidden right now, is our task to our, our modify task form. This one has the save and cancel buttons, so save changes and cancel changes, but we don't see that right now. So for step seven, we're going to hide this section and show this section. And the interesting thing about this is the code is already in place to do this. If you take a look uh, here in the modify promote delete form, they're checking this variable the task to modify. If this task to modify variable is empty, then we show this form. And down here for part five, if task to modify is not empty, then we show this. So there's already code in here to handle uh, displaying and hiding these forms. We just need to make sure we set the right value for this task to modify. Okay, jumping into our index.php so we can do this. We'll go down to the commented out case for modify task. I'm actually going to uncomment a couple others because we'll want to do save changes and cancel changes as well. But we'll start with modify task. Actually, that might give us a... No, that's fine for now. Okay. So in our modify task, we're going to do something very similar to what we've done for delete task. We'll just modify it a little bit. So we do want to get the index off of the post like we did before. That's great. We want to validate that, see if it's null or false, and give an error message. The error message should be appropriate for modifying, so I'll say the task cannot be modified instead of cannot be deleted. Else, we're not going to unset, we're just going to set that one variable that we wanted to set, which is called task to modify. So the else condition is task to modify equals our task list at task index. Okay, there we go. And then we've got a break, and we've got a case for save and cancel. So if I pick one of these tasks, we'll pick task two again, and click the modify button, modify task button. Now we've got the right form because we've set that tasks to modify variable. It's got our task name inside, and we have two buttons for save and cancel, but we actually don't have any functionality for save and cancel right now. Interestingly, the book doesn't talk about fixing those buttons, but I'm going to go ahead and fix those as part of step 7. So let's do the save changes button first. It's going to be very similar to what we have. Oops very similar to what we have already, so I'm going to borrow some code and modify it. Okay, if we take a look at the Save Changes button, what we've got in the form, we've got two inputs. We've got a modified task ID, and we've got a modified task. Uh, so the first one's an integer, the second one's a string. Uh, this is the task ID, the modified task is the actual uh, text of the task. So I'll jump into index.php and use these two inputs. Modified task ID. Since I copied the previous modified task, I've already got a task index. I just want to put the right uh, input name in there. And since that's a task ID, filter validate int works just fine. We'll copy that line, copy the name for our other input. And since this is a string, we don't want to filter validate int. Just take that out, and we'll save it to a different variable, uh, task name. 
Okay. Great. So then we do some validation. We've got if task is index is null or task index is false, we also want to check if our task name is null or our task name is false. So we'll just modify the code a little bit. And now we're checking if the task name is null, task index is null, or the task index is false, or the task name is false. If any of that happens, then we have an error message, the task cannot be modified. That still seems like a valid message to me, so we'll leave that as it is. Otherwise, we need to actually modify the task. We've got our task list, we've got our task index. We just want to set the task at that index equal to the new task name. So task name. All right, and then we can take this item out. Once that's saved, we can give this a try. I'm going to call this task 2.2 now. And click Save Changes and see what happens. There we go. So now it's called task 2.2. So our save is working. What if I try to cancel this? Cancel Changes is working for us, great. Because Cancel Changes, we actually don't want it to do anything. We just want it to return back to this form. So we don't actually have to change anything for cancel changes. It's great as it is. So we'll just break after that. OK, great. Now we can move on to step eight, which is the promote task. OK, so add code that allows the user to promote a task. This code should move the selected task up one index in the array of tasks. If the user selects the first task, the code should display an error that indicates that you can't promote the first task. Okay, so basically what that means if I, is if I pick task 2.2 and click Promote, then 2.2 should move up one, 2.2 would become five, task three should move down one, so it should become six. And the only exception is if I pick the first one, it doesn't have anywhere to go up higher in the list, so I should get an error about that. Okay, so how can we approach this? First, let's uncomment that task that case. Uh, and it's going to be similar to what we've done in other cases, so I'll copy the code that we've been using. Again, we're getting task index from the promote task button, because it's the same form we've been using. Actually, we better check that, because this is the, the modify task form. Yes, it's the modify promote delete, and that submits the our select is task ID. So yes, we are getting the task ID here, so that's great. All right, so now we have our check if task index equals equals null, task index equals equals false, task cannot be promoted. We have one other case here, and that is where task index equals 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 zero. That's what it described when it says you can't promote the first task. Remember, arrays are zero indexed, so if the index is zero, we can't promote it anymore because it's already the first item. Okay, otherwise, otherwise we have to do some array manipulation. So how do we do that? How do we switch items, or I'm going to use these indexes. How do we use switch item six with item five? Well, one way we can do that is put item five in a temporary variable assign item 6 to item 5, and then we assign item 6 to that temporary variable. That way we don't overwrite any variables, we still have them all, and at the end the order is correct. So let's use that approach. temp equals task index, or task list, at task index minus 1. task list at task index minus one. We're going to assign to task list at task index. And then task list at task index equals our temp variable. So that's basically what I just described put into code. So we take 
the if we're working on task 6, we want to move that up. Then we take task 5, put that into a temporary variable, assign what's in task 6 to what's in task 5. So momentarily, those two are the same thing. And then when we do the assign task 6 to the temporary variable, then it has the value that used to be in 5, and everything should be the way that we wanted it to be. Okay, so now we'll try the promote task. Go ahead and promote task 2.2. It should move up, and task 3 should move down. I'll try that out. That looks good. Okay, I'll promote it again. Yep, it keeps moving up the list. So let's keep promoting it till it gets to the top, and then make sure our error case works. Okay, so now it's at the top. I'll try to promote it again, and yes, we get our error. The task cannot be promoted. Perfect. So that's our promotion step for step 8. Finally, we'll move on to step 9, which is add, codes that, add code that lets the user sort all tasks alphabetically. So we've already got our case for that. Okay, and this time, since we're working with the whole array, we don't have to get an individual task out of it. We're just going to use an array sort or sort. We actually don't have a prefix. So sort. It takes the array by reference, so we can say task list. And that really should be all that we need to do. So let's try this out. Our sort tasks, it sorts it alphabetically.